presents, ugly sweaters, and of course, dashers. It's hockey time, Christmas is around the corner, we got New Year's coming up, and we've got a great edition of Dashers All Access coming at you. Right now, let's take you to Brittany Toulis, who's got your episode wrap up. For this episode of Danville Dashers All Access, we have tonight's game against Port Huron, Sunday's game against Danbury, Monday's game against Danbury, and wrapping it up is Wednesday's game against Dayton. I'm here with Mike, our runner-up for the Ugly Sweater Contest. Mike, I love your sweater. Did you make it or did someone else make it? Oh, my fiance made it. She's got some great taste. All right, I'm here with Shaylee, the winner of our Ugly Sweater Contest. You want to show us your sweater that won? Very nice. So are you excited about Christmas? Yes. Dylan, do you see that Santa's here today? Oh, you're going to go see Santa? What are you going to ask him for? A KTM? What is a KTM? It's a dirt bike. He thinks he needs a dirt bike for Christmas. So what do you think of the first two periods? We need to keep on hustling out on ice and go Dashers. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. What a wonderful game tonight. We won yet again what seems to be the norm. We scored six points. We won yes. six to four against the Prowlers. Real quick, let's take you down to Kevin Roberts. Thanks, guys. We're back here for another edition of this week's Top 3. Starting things off at number three, the Dayton Demolition Hockey Team has moved location from Hare Arena to Centerville, Ohio for the remainder of the season. Continuing on at number two, injuries have really hurt the Dashers this season with the latest being defenseman Zach Zamora. Zamora was going after a loose puck with a head full of steam when he lost his footing and cracked his knee into the boards, which they are now calling a cracked patella. And your number one, yes indeed, the Sons of Anarchy Player of the Week, Brent Clark. Kevin Roberts, thank you. Very nice sweater. I like the candy canes. I'm uh, rocking a little bit of a reindeer myself kind of thing going on. You've got a nice one too. I like the snowman. Why, thank you. For the second game, I believe in a row, Brent Clark gets a hat trick plus oh, yeah. one. And he's really let us know he's back. So who do you think was the unsung player of the game? Because we all know about Brent Clark and scoring four goals. Yes. Brosnan's, of course, a great player. Who do you think is the unsung hero tonight? Honestly, I've seen a lot of good stuff from Lavac tonight, I think. I haven't really seen him be a physical player most of the season, and I've seen him throw his body around a couple times. Beautiful passes, and I think he was a good player tonight. He's actually played with a lot more hustle over the past couple weeks than I think we've seen all season, which we've That's, needed it. Yeah, we have needed it. He needs to keep that up. And Justin LeBox, one of the biggest guys on our team, he needs to keep up that physicality. And we missing like holiday said, today, too. Exactly, so we are. We were missing holiday, so we needed that presence. Justin LeBox, he stepped up. He did. Great game from Justin LeBox. Great game from the Dashers. Well, it's kind of a somber day. We lost 6-2. Not a whole lot really more to say about it. I... It just seemed like we had an off night. I mean, everyone has an off night every once in a while, but it seems like all of our guys had an off night at the same time. And it just wasn't there tonight. No, and no, we were also not. missing a good handful of players, a handful of key players, too. Right, Clark is out. Denny is still out. Yes, Hutchinson was Hutchinson gone. got called up. Holiday's we've, uh, not here anymore. Right, we've lost four four players, and four players who saw a lot of minutes. And Brown wasn't on the ice very much either last night. Uh, Lester Brown is dealing with a hand injury. I believe yes. it's, a, uh, it's a very deep contusion. I believe is what it is. He, he did play. I mean, he did play. He was in the starting lineup, but he yeah. didn't see a lot of time on the ice. Just overall, a bad night. I don't really know what else to say about it. We lost six to two, so the score speaks for itself. A bad night and a very physical fight, but not in the good way. Like it wasn't like good, clean hits. There's a lot of dirty playing, mainly from the Danbury side. Cheap shots, um, faceoffs where they would knock the skate out from underneath our player and almost a bench clearing brawl in the third period. Right there, right there at the end of the game. We, we almost had a brawl. It didn't yes. happen. It didn't quite happen. We did get a couple of roughing penalties and things of that nature, but we did not see a fight. Uh, maybe maybe the tensions are growing because... Maybe next game we'll see one. I don't well, know because they're playing potential. tomorrow. So. Danbury just seems to have our number at home. We beat them on their ice, but we yeah. just can't seem to do it on our ice. Tonight, another, you know, we lost five to three.
just ended another game against Danbury, unfortunately in a loss, five to three. I don't, I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what happens in a ref's head that makes them decide that they are going to call things that aren't there. But the ref's last name for Wait, Hifflin, Black. How are you guys even officials? You're yeah. going to call holding on things that are tripping. You're going to call. Things you're going to call. Happen, not call elbows to the back of the head. What was going through your minds is what I want to understand because this is the only time, the only time I've ever seen Coach Harrison get that animated, yes. and it was at a ref. <laughs> And later on in the game, Levac, he got so mad that he was yelling obscenities at the ref. Exactly, and he's usually a very calm, yeah, he's cool, one collective of the most, player. He's... And to see them get a rise out of him like that, something had to have been wrong. I don't understand. Uh. I don't. I don't understand how this worked from a ref's perspective. I don't know if it's because you got booed and you just got upset about it, but you three ought to be ashamed of yourselves for that performance. Now, against Danbury two nights ago, I saw you the most animated I think I've seen you <laughs> during your tenure here. Can you, can you take us through a little bit of what happened? Because I know a lot of fans just saw you get hyped up. They don't know exactly what happened. Can you explain exactly what well, that you was? Well, you know, and, and again, I'm not blaming the referees, but that, like, and we all go through certain nights, and, and, and that night there, it was, a, it was a tough night on the referees. Uh, they, uh, uh, it was one of those nights they probably like to forget. And, uh, you know, they made the one call there on the one goal there. Where it was offside. They blew the whistle, and uh, it wasn't loud enough, and they kept the play going, and they scored against us. And, then there was a couple other hits, you know, before that, the one hit uh, from behind, there were actually two hits from behind. And, uh, th those are hits that, that you just can't have uh, in the game, and, uh, you know, because uh, I know the guys got up, but eventually someone's going to not get up. And, so I, I'm more worried about the guy's safety in, in those situations, and, and I'm not caring, I don't care if he got a two minute or whatever, I mean, that's what you're more worried about, the, the safety. So, but, uh, you know, it just kind of came to a, time, a boil at that time where, you know, and I kind of got a little, uh, uh, some people say I don't show a lot of emotion, and, and I, I do. And, but you know, when you're the coach, sometimes you got to control that emotion. And some nights it's it's nice to you know to, to go out. And sometimes if people saw me in the dressing room, they wouldn't think I'm so quiet. <laughs> now, moving moving from the refs onto the actual gameplay. What a physical game this was. Physical, yeah. But I honestly think we improved a lot from yesterday. There was a lot better passing, a lot of teamwork out there I saw a lot of teamwork a lot of backing each other up we talked about the physicality and there was a lot of self-policing on the ice and Tremblay stepped right up and unfortunately they both got put in the box for it Rock Iderson and Tremblay got put into the box for roughing and I could maybe understand Tremblay because maybe he shouldn't have reacted considering it was after the whistle but number 44 on Danbury who are you to grab somebody's head and go ahead and shove him into the boards like that especially after the whistle play he should have been ejected and he should be he suspended, should have been ejected but it's not going to happen because these refs again were just awful tonight and not only going is that back, dirty it's dangerous yeah, it's very extremely dangerous. dangerous very dangerous not only did he push him into the boards but he actually pushed his head down and his helmet very fell forceful. off exactly how did you feel about the the Brown and Rock Iverson thing. Because he took his head, he, he slammed it pretty hard against the boards, and then Atwell came at him. How does that make you feel as a coach, considering that you're taking player safety into accordance? Well, that, 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 that hit there, and then the, the hit right at the start of the game there against uh, Butler there. I mean, those are two hits that, you know, in my opinion, they should be suspended. And, 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 and even if it was my player doing it, that he should be suspended too, because that's not, that's not part of the game now. If you hit somebody straight up, and, 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 and unfortunately somebody gets hurt, then that's part of the game. But when, when you're going to run somebody from behind, that's not part of the game. And that's where the referee's got to step in and take charge on that. But let's move, uh, let's move ahead from this very frustrating game. Let's look I forward. I will say one more thing, though. I know we talked about um, Brown wasn't in, but I did like that he was still on the bench involved in the game. We've seen players not in, and they were sitting in the stands. Brown was on the bench right next to Coach Harrison. I seen him patting people on the back. But I liked how involved he was in the game, even though he wasn't physically on the ice. He was there. He had a presence with the team, and I really like I really liked that about him. Well, with refs this awful, who can blame him for trying to go after him? I know. If you could kiss any of the players at midnight, who would it be? Coach Harrison. <laughs> oh, we got to cheer for him. Ready? All right. Are you ready? We got to cheer. Yeah, we cheer for Coach when he walks out. Oh, all right. We're going to cheer for Coach when he walks out. <laughs> there goes your boy. You know, he's, I'm telling you. He keeps them together. At least we have a coach that showed up today. So if you were with them around midnight on New Year's, you wouldn't take one of them to kiss? I probably would. Which one? I don't know. Matt, what do you think of the game tonight so far? Oh, it's a pretty good game tonight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, excitement. You know, the band is awesome. 
and we're really glad we got to come tonight. So yeah, we had the Blackhawks band in. How did you like that? Well, I've uh, I've done a lot of karaoke down at the uh, 610 Tap here in town awesome. with uh, with the Blackhawks band. So I love it, and I think that the the crowd here tonight loved it. It was a good energy, and it they was brought a, a great atmosphere. Yeah, they brought a really good atmosphere to it. Blackhawks band is always the best. They bring a whole new spirit to this. Well, I haven't seen uh, this band exactly. You know, I've seen them. I've seen uh, two of the guys in, in other bands. And uh, man, I say they are very talented musicians. They really are. Yeah, they've been going like nonstop. They're really good. Yeah, it's, it's really funny because you know they'll like play like little snippets of your favorite songs. You know, good 20 seconds. You know, it's like really they're like teasing you. You know. But it's a good tease. Oh yeah, definitely. They played here for us tonight, and it was a, it was a nice little shot they on. Was. I think they really helped, and it, I, like you said, it brought the energy up, which I think affected the team and led to the 5 0 win. Back to the game, like you said, the passing was there tonight. Ray Tremblay, five points, two yeah. assists, three goals. Didn't expect it from him. Last no. game, he was, it just wasn't there. He was missing a lot of passes, but he was on it tonight, so congratulations to the hat trick. Yeah, he's usually um, a more quiet player. I mean, he's there for, he's had several assists in the past couple games, but goals we don't hear very much from. No, he's got really. three tonight. That's what we mean when we say team offense. Yeah. That's exactly what that is. A guy like Harrison, goalies and defensemen are kind of scared of him because he is a scorer. Yeah. He's a pure scorer. When a guy like that turns around and passes, they don't expect it, and you get easy goals like that. Exactly, and we, we had Denny back tonight. We did Brad have Denny Brad was Denny. back, and he had a really good impact on the game. And a lot of that is in part by our defense not letting them get through. Speaking of defensemen, Alicia Peetson had a goal. Oh tonight. my goodness, I know. It's that always awesome great. when you see a defenseman score a goal. But to see a defenseman score a goal that close to the goal, to yes. get a garbage goal, wonderful to see. However, took a cheap shot, took after, a cheap that. shot after that. It's a shame on you. <laughs> anyway. What a roller coaster of four games that was. We won one, we lost two, but we ended it on top. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna celebrate the new year with the good thought that the Dashers are still in first place and we're rolling. We'll see you during the weekend. For now, I'm Aaron Martin. Thank you for watching Dashers All Access. Yeah, I, you know, I asked Santa to come by. I don't know if he's going to, but just in case he does, I don't want to be wearing some stupid sweater when he shows up. You gotta look good. What are you trying to say here? I uh, mean, I haven't been whoa, that good whoa, this whoa. year. Oh, yes. Santa. Santa, how are you doing? Him. I have something for you. <laughs> exactly what I asked for. Thanks a lot. No problem. Merry Christmas. What Merry is Christmas. it? Merry Christmas, Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas. What did he give you? <laughs> I asked her. <laughs> I asked for a little bit of inspiration for our players, you know, for the upcoming games. And as we go in along, you know, progress through the season, I asked for a little inspiration. And you know what? I think I'm about to go give our players some inspiration. Hold All up, right. Sorry. All right, so I got a little inspiration for the guys. I wanted it for Christmas so I could give it to them. This is Coach Harrison. As you can see, wonderful golf player, wonderful hockey player, wonderful inspiration. That's the best picture ever. Did you see this? <laughs> Merry Christmas! Use one hot pepper. <laughs>